everybody and welcome back to brand new dead overflow video my name is dead overflow and today we're actually going to be talking about malware analysis for beginners so don't be scared this is actually going to teach you everything you need to know about the introduction to malware analysis and hopefully this series on this channel will basically spark some new members of my community some new subscribers so if you're new make sure to subscribe because this is going to be a brand new series on this channel that i'm going to actually be introducing so we're going to be reverse engineering actual and real malware that you know has been sent to me as a sponsorship offer as i may say and yeah it's going to be pretty fun so make sure to subscribe not to miss that out and also if you want to learn bug bounty hacking like actual hacking check out my course link is in the description as well as my game hacking course which actually includes real examples that you can try on real games i don't know what you're waiting for link is in the description also my platform avenue everything is in the description now let's go straight into the video before we start with the video i actually have to tell you one thing the goal of today's video is to basically do a static analysis on malware uh, actually static so there's two types of different an analysis that you can perform or on a target or even malware it is the static and dynamic analysis if you don't know what these are static is when you just observe source code assembly code just look at the behavior now not actual behavior you have to run it but dynamic means you run the malware and basically have some like attachments to it to monitor what it actually does so that's pretty epic and today's in today's video we're not going to be doing the dynamic because in my opinion it's a bit more complex than static static is just simple and static analysis is as simple as this so in front of me i have a simple test one.exe which in my opinion could be malware but we actually get into that whether it is malware or not so we can actually just plug this into the virus total simple as that that is actually what i usually do when i'm come come across malware so we can just put this here and we can essentially do a little scan and as you can see oh boy this is malware indeed but it could be a false positive we never know but from what i can see there is no false positive here so actually to understand now what malware actually does there's a different thing we now know that this is malware but to actually understand it we do need to take some more extra steps but for now this is actually pretty good because if we actually know that this is you know malicious but uh, let's keep on going so if we actually navigate over to the behavior tab you can see some more interesting stuff being displayed and one of the most interesting stuff is you can actually see that these are the sandbox reports from for example let's just focus on uh zenbox let's say and we can actually see that the this program does a network communication to dns resolutions uh, that's a bit suspicious and we can also see which files that this has been opening so system test one dxe all of that stuff and we can also see the files written interesting but i don't think this is actually too too much to be fair with you and this is the processes tree and as you can see it this spawns a new process which does a con host but what this con host thing does is is just you know scanning with windows anti like anti malware executable built-in like windows defender scans it for malware so now that you understand that this is actually simple as that sigma rules wow oh wow so now that you understand that this is the simplest thing let's actually take a look in to the one step above this which is using a program now, which program you may ask well it is called pe studio and let's run this little bad boy to actually show you what you can do with it so this is a pe studio in my opinion a very amazing program which i honestly use and we can open up this file right over here and it will scan it for us and it will also tell you the virus total score here and it will also tell you what is happening but in my opinion what i actually usually do is i just usually look at the strings that's where i usually look into because this can tell you a whole lot of strings that are actually located within this program and you can scroll down and you can see uh, what basically has been flagged as a malicious but we don't actually know that yet for sure this could be just a very much a uh, false positive but let's not keep on scrolling to see if we can actually see something interesting here which i'm assuming we won't because this if it's malware it might be actually a bit more obfuscated but after a bit of scrolling we can see that you know nothing really interesting happens here so we still don't know what actually this malware does and this is what i usually do is just scan for strings because we can maybe do a static analysis to look at the source code maybe just look at the raw assembly of the program but that raw assembly might call a function call to maybe a system on a on a 64 on a base 64 string and you'd actually never know then what is going on unless you actually specifically look at the strings so you know sometimes 
sometimes code can be hidden within these strings. So that's actually very important also Intel. Uh, other than that, actually, we don't have to see too much here. I am assuming we there is nothing too crazy about it. There's 1000 values at the end of the day. So there is a little string. It is ASCII and it's shutdown dash A. That is not something I, in my opinion, it, that is not something that should be in this whole thing. So that means this is hard coded within the program. So the program may be called shutdown A to prevent a shutdown, but that's all we know right now. And that's just an educated guess. We don't actually have, maybe not even educated guess because we don't actually see the source code as of now, but this is going to the right direction to say the least. So now we're actually going to be doing a code analysis. So we're going to be using G Hydra or how you call it? G Hydra, G Hydra, G Hydra. I don't know how you call it. I'm Bosnian. So I call it G Hydra and I'm going to be uh, using that. So I'm going to actually give you just a little tutorial on how to use it. So hopefully this is going to be fun to you. And honestly, it's very fun to me. So let's go go. Let's go with G Hydra. So after you download G Hydra, you can just run this bad boy. Wah, there you go. And let me see see what happens after I run Jidra. Ooh, look at that. Uh, so what are we actually going to be doing right now? So we're going to be actually opening a brand new uh, project. I already did this. So I'm going to just go open a new project, go for non-shared project and just, you know, a project name blah, and finish. So right now we have blah, and we have to go to now file and go import file. And of course, select this test.exe and it will actually scan and do all of its stuff. And as you can see, it also understands the language and the format is portable, executable or PE or exe. So let's click OK. And after now, it's going to do some basic analysis just to basically find all of the important stuff. Uh, it could take some time. And as you can see, this is OK. And after that, you should see it right over here in your project. Now, what you do is you can just double click on it and it will open up the code editor. Allow us to edit the code, not actually edit the code, view the code most importantly. So let's actually now, uh, it, it tells you to the text test one exe has been not, not been analyzed. Would you like to analyze it now? You can go for yes, but let's say you clicked no or clicked X because sometimes that can happen. So you have to you have to go to analysis, auto analyze and just click analyze and that's pretty much good to go. Okay, so it just tells me some basic stuff. I don't know, click OK, it doesn't matter. And now you can go to functions and you can see all of these interesting functions they found. But the most important function is underscore main, which is right over here, which is mostly entry point to every, but a lot of C++ programs. But bear in mind that if you know anything about C++ or C, main doesn't always have to be a entry point, especially when it comes to malware. Of course, in C++ programs, it is, you know, required, but malwares tend to get different entry points, but still G Hydra or Ghidra, how you call it, will tell you that ahead of time. So we can now disassemble the basically or decompile the main function and we can see what this actually main function does. It calls a system shut down a and return zero or ret. OK, and we can actually select this and we can see it right over here. So this right here is the assembly code. And you can see that this is basically being put to local 20 variable, which is then being used into the system call to call shutdown A. If you don't know what shutdown A is, it is a function in Windows that basically allows you to either shut down a computer or do anything. But the fact that it has a dash A, it means that this will um, cancel a shutdown. So, so now that we understand what this actually does, we can go back to the folder where our malware was. Uh, let me just get there and we can just uh, open this in terminal. And if I actually type shutdown S, if I type shutdown S, it will tell me you're about to be signed out within less than eight minutes. But if I run this program, log off has been canceled. The schedule shutdown has been canceled. So now we actually successfully reverse engineered, actually not really reverse engineered. It's a bit of a strong word for that, but we decompiled our very first malware. I, I didn't actually make it malicious. Of course, it was made by me. I didn't want to make it malicious, but I just left some crumbles of maliciousness so that these guys would trigger and tell you that it is malware. Of course, it's some complex stuff, but in the next episodes, what we're actually going to be using is combining all of the knowledge and also learning a bit more about dynamic analysis and all of that stuff. And the dynamic analysis is going to be a very, and I mean very important part. This is just a glimpse to dynamic, but dynamic is definitely a different world and you can use any dot run to basically perform a dynamic analysis but what i recommend is just 
the VM. VM is always the best. And in the next episode, I'm going to tell you how to set up your VM, how to run malware within VM. And for the first time on this channel, we're actually going to be using real malware that somebody has sent me, sent, sent to me on an email as a sponsorship offer. So hopefully that's going to be fun as well. So yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for watching this little video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Uh, and yeah, as always, peace.